Hey everybody, Wayne here. In today's recon, I'm taking a look at Tattered Flags, Into the Whirlpool, designed by Herman Lutman and published by Blue Panther. This is a tactical war game that focuses on the battle around the wheat field during the second day of Gettysburg. All right, so Into the Whirlpool is the first game in the Tattered Flag series. I know Herman Lumman and Blue Panther have confirmed there's at least one more game coming, and if the series is good, hopefully many more games. Um, Into the Whirlpool focuses on the fighter on the wheat field during the second day of Gettysburg, July 2nd, 1863. Now, a couple things to get out of the way. When I first heard of this one, I wasn't sure because it was advertised and promoted as a combination uh, miniatures and sort of traditional card war game. I, I'm not a miniatures player. I don't have the time, money, or patience to paint miniatures and play miniatures. So when they said this was a combination con, I was like, I don't know about that. But they sent me this copy to check out. This is a review copy. As soon as I got it and started looking at it, I said, uh, yeah, I'm interested in this one. So I'm glad that I have this opportunity. And hopefully this video will give any of you who have doubts about it or are wondering an opportunity to at least see it kind of a little bit more detail. All right, into the whirlpool. First off, love this cover. Secondly, remember guys, I do film in 4K as always, so if you need to see it in 4K, if there's anything you wanna pause um, to get a better look at, make sure you're watching in 4K, so click the little gear icon in the bottom right, check it on 4K, and then you can go ahead and pause it and you should get a great image of whatever you're looking at. Survivors of the fighting swirling in Gettysburg wheat field remember that raging torrent as the whirlpool of death. Tattered Flags number one, Into the Whirlpool, is a first in a series of hybrid historical miniature slash board game designs that simulate tactical American Civil War combat in a playable format. All right. Many players do not have the time, funds, or eyesight. Well, I'm about two, two of three uh, to paint armies of miniature figurines. Tattered Flags uses ready to play cardboard count as substitute for such miniatures. All right. This is a two player game, but I will be playing it, looking at it, and playing it solitaire, as usual. All right, into the whirlpool. Go ahead and open her up. Nice sturdy box. So again, published by Blue Panther. This is also printed by them, right? They're a printer for other publishers like White Dog Games, Holland Spiel. All right, so we got some dice. Use a 10-sided dice and it uses uh, percentiles for rolling. So something like, hey, red die goes first, you roll, right? Uh, 93, that type of thing some cards we'll look at them in a sec a uh, card stock game turn track 4 15 p.m to 8 p.m there was a late sort of afternoon evening fight a little terrain chart on here nice okay cards pop right off as soon as i did it right see that's operator on that one um, he's a big fan of event cards, you know, having special events that replaces, you know, extra rules. Instead, you just have an event card that kind of will have something happen. So back of the cards are all going to be the same. That cover artwork, very nice. Love that artwork. So be things like Rebel Yell. After Rebel Charge declared, Charging Rebel Unit is automatically made confident. Hold the line. So we have, you know, a Rebel activation and then a Union 1. Um, after Rebel Charge declared, Defending Union Unit is automatically made confident. And then you have a... I think it'd be a move or I don't know which I don't know what that will be. If that'll be a move or fire, maybe move charge, something like that. So we'll figure it out as we learn the game. Alright. Now I did peek through the box ahead of time. So I do have the um they did send me the copy with the canvas map. So here's a paper map and a canvas map. We'll look at those in a second. I think it's, it's absolutely gorgeous, but we'll, and same with the colors. The artists on this one, we're going to point out because uh, beautiful production here. Like I already, I already did peek through it. I couldn't help myself. But we'll get to those in a second. Okay, so we have player raids. Two of them are the exact same because it is a two-player game, right? Fold-out style. So you have into the whirlpool, you have your unit morale test table. Again, you can see it is percentage-based, right? Zero, so 1 to 100. Bayonet combat. Bayonet combat to hit, fire combat tables, um, line of sight for features obscuring and blocking, fire combat hit types, and flip her over here. More charts, formation morale, test table. You get the idea. Again, sequence of play up here in the top left. So you're activating a brigade, you're giving it an order. 
It's conducting the order during the action step, checking formation integrity, and then you're going back and forth between the, the two players. All right, we have our rule book and our scenario book here. They're both in color. So it goes up to 36 pages total. I did look through the rules. It doesn't it doesn't seem like the type of game that I would call up 36 page rule book level complexity. But be aware that it's I wouldn't call it a simple or you know super easy to learn game either. It looks like it's gonna have fairly simple sort of action system, sort of order system, and then the combat system will have a little bit extra layer of complexity to it. So here we have Morning Irish Wolfhound on the Irish Brigade Monument, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. All right. So just looking through it real quick again with my recons. I'm not trying to teach the game. Uh, maybe get an overview if I know something. Otherwise, I'm giving kind of my first impressions. So telling what game components, the map, the, the terrain features, unit types, you know, infantry, what they look like, or infantry and artillery, um, the fresh side or battle-worn side for units, which we'll look at those here in a couple minutes. Looks like colors, and then we have, for example, so it is... So uh, not a column style rule book, right? It takes up the whole page, but nice, good size text. Should be easy enough to read for most people. Setup, sequence of play. Here's one clearly more in depth than the, on the player aid here. Again, I'd like to see some pictures. I'd like to see the pictures, you know, brigade orders you're giving, assaulting, engaging, defending, maneuver, regrouping, or indecisive. Impose, right? So orders imposed upon or given by the loss of a leader. Fill the order change attempt or buy a battle card. That's not one you'd want to pick normally. Ooh, with line of sight. Yep, so we have a little line of sight, little example page there. All right. Okay, so yeah, it is a full, uh, again, 30, looks like 36 pages of rules, although, well, 35, I guess, filling out 35th page. But from what I've read so far, and I did read through the rules once, not overly complex. Just not going to be a light game, but we do want a little bit of uh, meat to our games, right, guys? So scenario book is going to come with the six scenarios here. First contact, all the way down to reaping the wheat, the bloody wheat field. Oh, man. So just going to give you um, an example, sort of information at the top, and then Confederate Union setup, scenario rules, victory conditions, right? For each of them. But the nice thing is, so we're not going to focus on that too much. I mean, you got all that on there. Perfect. Good. Good to know. But also a nice, big, beautiful... Um, cardboard or cardstock um, scenarios. So you can see scenario one, say first contact, you have this big scenario sheet, uh, picture of the battlefield, exactly where each of the units are gonna go, how the turn tracks can be set up, showing you exactly how things will be if maybe maybe more of a visual person, you don't wanna necessarily follow just the, you know, the number letters because the coordinates, because we'll look at the map in a second, are gonna rely on a letter and a number on the map. So each of the scenarios has its own nice setup card. Nice big setup card. So very cool here. I really like that. All right. Now let's look at these counters. I'm going to look at the map. So here's where I'm, these counters and map are beautiful. So by the way, I love my game design. Ryan Hillman Development and Graphics. Fred Manzo Development. Uh, Alex Zaterain. Zaterain. Artwork and Graphics. Apologies about the last name. Alex this game looks gorgeous. So let's look at the Confederates and then we'll look at some unions. And again, pause it if you need to, but we'll, we'll zoom in a little bit. So here are the actual units for the game. Nice butternut color for the Confederates, you know, seven South Carolina. So this would be right there. Um, this would be the regiments, uh, 7th South Carolina Regiment, 8th South Carolina, 15th South Carolina, you know, 16th Georgia, et cetera. Those would be the different regiments. And if you look in the top right of the unit, you can see, say, a number one up here, number two down here, number three. Those That's going to be the brigade. Um, within each of the units here, in each of the, so we have individual units, right? And we have the regiments here. It's going to have a number, the one out of three, two out of three, three out of three, tells you how many units are in that regiment. The top left is going to be their experience rating. So that higher is better. I think it is, 
is it one to six maybe? Although most of them seem to be three to four. Um, if they use all the infantry um, are gonna be generally rifled muskets. If they aren't, if they have smooth bore muskets, it'll say that'll be an S next to the, the number for the experience there. Back side of the counters. And again, these are Blue Panther style counters. They're nice, thick, almost a woodish, kind of a, a very thick cardboard, um, compressed wood style of counter. So fresh side, battle worn side. As units are taking hits, they're suffering disruptions. These counters will be placed um, with the unit, showing they're becoming more disrupted. Take a look at the Union here. Absolutely beautiful. I love the artwork. I love the counter design. Some federal troops as well. And then more of the Confederates at the bottom. The Union, I believe, are the only ones who had artillery during this particular fight, during this part of the battle. So you'll just see the battery for um, the Union having artillery. I just love, love these counters. When you really zoom in and look at them, I just think they look fantastic. So you can see some more. That's beautiful. And they will punch out nice and easy. Now you can see them. Nice, it's a nice thick counter, right? Really good, really good heft to it, good weight, good size to it. Should be easy to maneuver on these maps. So speaking of which, let's, let's open up this map and look at it. I am a huge fan of this map. So again, there's a paper version. You can get a paper version or you can get a version that has the um, canvas map. So paper map, pretty standard outside of the artwork, which is gorgeous. Was Paper is pretty standard. They Blue Panther with their maps are more of a matte finish, not a glossy. But this canvas map, this thing is incredible. It's really hard to tell on video, but it is just fantastic quality heft and such a good look to it. So hopefully you guys can get a good view. I can move the camera if I need to. All right, there we go. And I actually got it perfectly on here. Um, Stony Hill, Rose's Wheat Field, right? Weikert's Farm, Rose Farm, um, wooded areas. So what you're looking at on this map here, right? And you say it's not a traditional, it's definitely not a traditional hex encounter one. New to me, but I've learned about it. So units are going to be on those points. And if you look at the points, see the points have directions. So say looking at any, any point, but look at this one right here. There's little directions on here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A unit can be facing any of those eight directions. So put your map down. Oh, I'm not gonna need, I don't think I'm gonna need any. I'll put a, maybe put a little couple game boxes or books on here to flatten this out fully and we'll be good to go. But what you're doing is your units are going on here covering one of those and then facing so facing is important in this game facing one of these directions right one of the eight directions and when you're giving orders when you're moving right they have to follow movement along those axes those directions you have to rotate for moves you can move forward you can do side or back you cannot do it in angle so to move this way you'd have to spend movement to rotate move maybe reorient or just stay that way that allows them to take that aspect of miniatures fighting, miniatures combat, miniatures movement, and put that into a cardboard board war game. So, did I cover everything? I think I did. Oh man, I'm excited for this one. Like I said, I, I'm in full disclosure. I was nervous about this one. I, I did not, I did not wear it. I was sent a review copy. Um, and as soon as I started, I said, okay, well, you know, give it a shot, write a review copy, I'll look at it. Wow, I love this artwork by Alex unpronounceable last name to me, my apologies, Zatarain. Um, beautiful artwork on the map, on these counters. I think the game looks simply fantastic. So very excited now. Does it play great as a two-player game? I don't know yet. That, that's that's where I'll give my honest opinion and I'll share my feedback as always. Um, but I'm excited to roll some dice and 
you know, hey, American Civil War game, you you got me, right? You know, like I say, you got me hooked. As soon as it showed up and I started digging into it, I said, yeah, I'm be checking this one out. So, okay, that is Tattered Flags, number one, Into the Whirlpool from Herman Lutman and Blue Panther. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little recon overview of the game and the system. Please, if you're not a subscriber, I would appreciate it. Just, just click the subscribe button, super easy. Otherwise, a thumbs up. And of course, comment below. Just let me know. You have the game yet? Are you looking at it? Are you looking at it now? Considering it? Um, I'll have links to Blue Panther's website where you can buy it down below in the video description. Otherwise, yeah, look forward to this one being on the channel in the near future. So until next time, everybody, later.